thought I'd make a video of my battery box set up for kayak fishing at night. I uh, use this just to power some lights that I have, some LED lights. What we have is a Pelican 1120 case. I uh, drilled a hole in the top and installed a fitting. I believe this is a half inch NTP fitting to half inch uh, tube fitting, compression fitting. This is actually a swage lock fitting, which is kind of expensive, but I had access to a couple of these. You could use either a push to connect fitting. Uh, they make some plastic ones that are fairly inexpensive, but in this setup, just for demonstration, I'm using this swage lock fitting here. So here's the box in the open state, and what you see it's just a, a port or a through into the box. And what this does is creates a waterproof seal uh, between the tubing that you're going to install into that swage lock fitting and inside the battery box. And what I did on the inside and the outside of the other was applied some epoxy and then RTV on top of that just as a secondary measure uh, to keep water out of the box. So this is the light that I was using in my setup. Uh, it was an eBay Chinese special that I got and I believe it was listed as an IP6 uh, rated uh, for water protection or ingress protection. I don't really believe that rating, uh, so I went ahead and took the unit apart and applied RTV around all the joints and stuff within the, the light, and after taking it apart, I believe that less. Um, but just as a safety measure or additional protection, I went ahead and I disassembled it and applied RTV to the unit. Uh, one thing I noticed when taking the light apart was that electrically it was just um, you know hardwired pretty much to the LEDs. There were no sort of safety features within the unit, like a fuse or a uh, resistor. So if you have uh, some knowledge of, of light setups, uh, I don't, but you may want to consider that as well if, you know, as a safety feature for your light setup. What I did in this unit was just spliced the standard cord of the light into a typical AC cord that you could get at a hardware store. And the way I did that was just taking a half inch OD tubing, uh, made the splice in between, and then epoxied both of the ends to keep that waterproof. So here's the tail end of the AC cord, and what I did was just ran that through another section of half inch tubing, uh, epoxied that tube in the end and put some RTV on top, as well as epoxy and RTV in the other end, and that just makes this whole section waterproof. And this also acts as protection of the cord, you know, from chafing or anything like that, bending in your light setup. On the other end, I just have some crimp connectors that'll attach directly to the battery. So just to revisit the end of the AC cord for my setup, uh, what I have is that AC cord placed in the half inch tubing. Um, I use using this, the swage lock uh, fitting. So what I have here is the half inch tube nut. Uh, I went with nylon uh, back and front ferrules. It typically comes with a stainless steel ferrule, but you can go with nylon, uh, which will allow you to make multiple connections and disconnections, uh, whereas the stainless are more of a permanent connection. If you use push to connect fittings, uh, they're much cheaper and you wouldn't have this sort of setup. The tube just presses directly into that fitting and you have a waterproof uh, sort of setup. But I went with the swage lock just because I had access to them and uh, you know, they're really nice fittings. On the other end, we just have the uh, crimp connects that'll allow you to, to connect to the battery. What I was using here is just a 12 volt, eight amp hour battery. Uh, these fit really nicely into these uh, 1120 cases. And I just used a polyethylene foam sort of cut out. You could use uh, anything like um, styrofoam just to help keep the battery in place and keep it from moving around, which could eventually uh, lead to connection failures or something like that. So just to revisit the setup, um, I have the 12 volt battery, the connections made to the battery, they feed up through the swage lock fitting, uh, which creates the waterproof seal between the half inch tubing and the box. And at the top of this tube is, uh, I placed epoxy and RTV, and what that does is essentially creates a waterproof seal all the way down. The added advantage of this tubing is it serves as a strain relief so it's essentially like a boot on a cable uh, where, if, you know, if you're pulling on it or something like that, it, it helps protect the components inside and also the connections you make to your battery. On the original setup that I had, I uh, didn't have an easy means to turn on and off the light uh, other than disconnecting at the battery point and reconnecting. I was somewhat cumbersome and reading online I saw a lot of people had issues with 
sort of waterproof or water resistant on off switches. Uh, what I was able to find was something called a reed switch, R-E-E-D. And what that is is essentially a magnetic switch um, that activates if you bring a magnet to it. Uh, they're used on things like doors and such as a sort of trigger when a door is open. Uh, but I was able to find a glass one on eBay and it's been a while and I'll put the link in the video if I can find it. but a glass switch that's normally open. And what that means is when you bring a magnet to the switch, it'll close, uh, closing that circuit and causing the light to turn on. So what I have here is just a strong magnet uh, that if you bring it near that switch, it'll turn the light on and off. And what I did was just uh, put a heat shrink around this one and you can just sort of tether a line to your AC cord or wherever just so it's always in, in close proximity or make it some way you can slide it up and down this tube. Uh, one thing to note about that on the setup I had is that sometimes the switch would stick closed uh, leaving the light on and all I did was you know sort of tap on the tubing there and it would eventually open back up and shut the light off. Uh, but I hope this information is useful to you guys out there. Uh, what it is in the end is essentially a waterproof uh, submersible switch uh, that has no sort of on and off toggle or anything like that that can let water get into it. Hope you enjoyed.